Yo guys, welcome back to the Uncle Sharma channel. Another international break done and dusted. Um, actually, one of the international breaks I've probably enjoyed the most. I think I needed that break from football, mainly from Inter. As I was saying in my previous videos the last few weeks, you know, this team was starting to drag me down a little bit. The performances were getting a bit tedious. Conte's tactics and stubbornness, just the, the way the team was playing, the mood around the team, the fan base, you know, Twitter and Instagram, everyone was just getting a lot. So it was actually, for once, I actually wanted this international break and I enjoyed it, even though I was ill last week. Um, I had a mad fever, not COVID, but I'm all right now. So I didn't get to enjoy it fully, but got to chill out for a bit. Two weeks of no inter watching this Italy team that was very, very impressive. Shout out to Roberto Mancini who's done an amazing job to lift the Italian national team since uh, Giampiero Ventura's uh, madness, you know, when he was supposed to speak about what that man did to, to the Italian national team. And now the Azzurri are looking good um, in the final four for the Nations League. Uh, Nicolo Barella is the leader of that Italian team. It's so good to see Bastoni is also uh, stepping in for Chiellini and Bonucci and, you know, look like he should be there, which he should be, you know, I said, in the past that he was the best Italian centre-back last year alongside Acerbi and those were the two starting uh, in this uh, past few matches for Italy. And in general, all of Inter's international players, they all performed at a mad level. I saw a lot of people were getting angry like, ah, why don't these guys do it for Inter? What happens when they play for Inter and they go for the national team and they're like the best players in the world? And I can see why, you know, if you look at some of the stats here. You've got Eriksen who had two goals and an assist. Vidal scored three goals for Chile. Lukaku, two goals in an assist. Lautaro scored a goal. Hakimi scored a goal. Uh, Bastoni Umbrella played two amazing matches. Um, and then when they come back to Inter, you know, apart from probably Barella, uh, Lukaku and Bastoni, you could say the other guys are probably underachieving at Inter at the moment. But, you know, obviously it's a, it's a different game when you go play international football. But let's hope they bring that form to Inter now, you know, bring some of that confidence there from that good form. Um, in general, though, one thing I was worried about in this international break, which did end up happening in the end, was pretty much all Inter players played a lot of minutes, especially the one I was hoping wouldn't play too much because he just came back from an injury was Lukaku and he played two full 90 minutes for Belgium. Roberto Martinez, I'm watching you. Elsewhere, Bastoni played three full 90 minutes, which, you know, he kind of had to because of the Italy's defensive uh, situation at the moment. But... I'm not too worried about that, you know, he's 21 years old, he can handle it, he's not played every single match for Inter, so I'm okay with that one. Barella playing 290 minutes, that one's a bit more worrying. Gagliardini, 90 minutes, good for him. D'Ambrosio, 79. Eriksen, you know, he only gets minutes whilst he's out there for, for Denmark. So obviously, when you have top quality players, you're gonna have these issues when the international break comes around, but we know was there any need for this international break or was the need for those friendlies that's the one that annoys everyone the friendlies you know okay nations league it's kind of interesting i'm happy that they've introduced that because it reduces the friendlies but the friendlies are still there so and obviously one topic that just keeps cropping up and obviously you can't avoid it it's christian erickson every time every single day i go on social media there's someone that's written like a whole paragraph or there's someone arguing about it, Italian Twitter, international Inter Twitter, it's just everyone to start can't stop speaking about him. Um, not even just Inter fans, just the Spurs fans were still obsessed with him, AC Milan fans were, you know, poking fun at Inter, uh, transfer rumours, Chanaloglu swap, you know, Xhaka swap, all this madness. I just wanted to put forth my two cents and my two rupees on the whole situation. Um, not that I want to talk about it too much, just briefly. Christian Eriksen, if you go back in my channel, I made two videos when he first signed. First when, you know, it was almost announced and then when he was announced, I made like a little tactical scout to see where he would fit in. And both those videos, you can see I was excited as hell. I was like, yes, we've got a fucking world-class technical midfielder in this team. Not fucking Conte workhorse, you know, this was an signing that I wasn't expecting, to be honest. I was like, this is not a Conte type player, but this is a player that I, from you know, if it was FIFA or something, is a signing I would make, but... Obviously, in theory, probably doesn't make too much sense, but it was an opportunity in the market, transfer market, to make that happen for 20 million. Um, and I think still Inter probably would make that. You, you take that gamble when you have a, such a player that's available. 
but it hasn't worked out. The boy came, he's 28 years old, 29 years old, you know, he's, he's in his peak years, so he should be. And he's come with a world-class reputation as, you know, one of the best playmakers in Europe. And it just hasn't worked out. And you can put the blame on Conte, which he definitely deserves. I, I would say, you know, some people say it's Ericsson's fault for being weak-minded, weak mentality, not, you know, trying to his best to adapt, not getting stuck in. And then some people blaming Conte. I think the truth is in the middle, you know, me, I always try to find the middle route. But I think the truth is in the middle, you know, Conte, Conte with his stubborn tactics, stubborn ways, you know, he gave him a chance and then he takes him out. Doesn't really give him the confidence, the keys to the midfield. He's just, you know, expecting him to create something all the time, you know, putting him on in like 10 minutes before the end of the match. As if he's not that type of player, he's not going to change the match for you in 10 minutes. And Ericsson himself, you know, Lukaku mentioned it today, he's still not learned Italian and it's going to be almost a year that he's here, which is not a big deal. A lot of players sometimes take longer and, you know, only some players like Lukaku are gifted and can learn a language in the space of a few weeks. But you can tell he just hasn't, he doesn't quite seem to fit into the, the dressing room. You know, social media sometimes gives you a clue and you don't really see him active with other players and stuff. Even on the pitch, a lot of times he's actually when you watch him to play, a lot of players ignore him and that kind of shows that he doesn't seem to have the confidence from the other players as well. So he's not quite fitted himself into the group. When he is brought in into the matches, he doesn't really, you know, come in with like that, you know, I'm going to change this match type of mentality in terms of, you know, working hard. He's not lazy, he's just, you know, he's that type of player that you can't, you don't really see unless he's doing something on the ball. But he's not really made things happen, you know, he's uh, long range shooting, we haven't really seen much of it doesn't take on players he's never taken on players but he just doesn't seem like he's ready to kind of adapt his game for content for the Serie A also it must be said that you know the style of play interplay is not suited to Eric Christian Eriksen not just in terms of the physicality and the pressing and stuff but in terms of when he gets the ball when I, I look back at some Tottenham games and I used to watch Tottenham quite a lot on the Pochettino because they were a great team to watch and a lot of the goals and assists that Christian Eriksen uh, uh, assisted at Spurs was players making running behind the fences so it would be Dele Alli, Harry Kane, Human Son, those guys making cutting runs in behind the defence or across the defence and he would pick him out. At Inter what do you guys see when when into play? Lukaku and Lautaro come towards come towards the midfield, towards the the playmakers, you know, they don't go they hardly ever. When, when do you ever see us scoring a, a goal from a, a ball behind the defence? Very, very rarely. Um, and that's what Eriksen thrives off, you know, he, he thrives off those riskier passes. Um, and, you know, if, if we're going to play to just launch the ball up to Lukaku and Lautaro, we don't need a player like Eriksen. And we've seen when teams close themselves, um, you know, level men behind the ball. The likes, like the match against Genoa, that's a perfect example where, you know, it should be Eriksen to kind of unlock the defences, but that's probably the Genoa matches, both last season and this season, with some of the worst, I think, Eriksen played because he just doesn't, he doesn't know what to do, what else to do. He just plays those simple balls and those risky balls are not even there for him to even try. So basically, all in all, as I said, I don't want to talk about it too much. This is the last chance to loon for him. Next international break is in March. Um, I think by then he'll be gone. I think in January, it doesn't look like he will stay. You know, I think Inter will try to get back the 20 million they paid for him. Hopefully there are teams out there that can cut our losses. Um, the likes of PSG have been rumoured, but I hope for the best of Inter and Ericsson that he gets sold because the experiment just hasn't worked out, it's failed, sometimes you just have to take the L. And in general, obviously, as mentioned Conte there in the Ericsson situation in general, some people are Conte out, some people are Conte in. Uh, I'm not in the middle in this one, I am Conte in, you know, I still have a lot of faith in Antonio Conte, I still think he is one of the best coaches that money can get right now. Uh, what a lot of money can get right now. In the league, the situation is not catastrophic at all. Five points off the top from AC Milan, three points off second, you know, behind Sassuolo. So literally one win against Torino, We're back up there. Uh, no need to, you know, get too drastic with some of the things that I've been reading. You know, the team, the, I see the performances are still there. Chances are being created. The results need to start though. This is, you can only give him so much time and especially, especially in the Champions League. And their things need, are quite drastic now. You know, we can't go two years in a row on the Conte and getting kicked out at the group stage. And that, you know, that does fire a lot, a lot of alarm bells if the likes of Munch and Gladbach go ahead of Inter. Yeah, guys, that was it for today. I'm just looking forward to Inter coming back. Hopefully they don't fucking draw the hell out of games again. And, you know, I don't want to see the same shit. Like, I want to see some changes. I want to see some 
adaptation. I want to see some new ideas from Conte that he's worked on the last two weeks. Pretty much everyone is back, even Stefano Sensi. Looks like he might be back to fitness with a new uh, personalized fitness regime. So let's see if that works. Yeah, those were just uh, my thoughts on uh, this international break and Inter moving forward. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below around Ericsson, around you know the international break, around uh, Conte, are you Conte in, Conte out? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'll be previewing the upcoming matches, of course. And so it's Forza Inter, Forza Azzurri. Ciao. Very far behind.